I don't know what he meant by do something about Malcolm and I don't know why nobody thinks it's such a coincidence that less than a year before Malcolm was killed those instructions were given out. Hey guys, um, it's been a really long time. I don't even know how to do this anymore correctly, but, um, yeah, so I'm not going to go into depth on why I was gone because, like, that would be, like, so messy and I'm not trying to be messy. So, yeah, I'm not even going to talk about why I've been gone, but I am happy that I'm back. So, yeah, um... God. so today's video is actually going to be about um the deaths of malcolm x and martin luther king jr and how they are related to j edgar hoover now this video is probably going to be uh, offensive to some people i hope i don't offend anyone but i feel like i will and i just want to say that i'm not trying to be offensive in any way in this video i'm just going through information that I compiled through theories that I've heard that I found interesting and I thought they'd be cool to post to this channel as I am revamping my page. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into this video. So, according to biography.com, um, J. Edgar Hooker was born January the 1st. Um, 1895 and he later joined the Justice Department in 1917 and was named the di director of the Department's Bureau of Investigations in 1935. Um, Hoover instituted strenuous agent recruiting and advanced intelligence gathering techniques. Um, during his tenure, um, Hoover actually confronted gangsters, Nazis, and communists, so he thought he was a pretty bad guy. Um, but later he actually ordered illegal surveillance against people that he suspected was enemies of the state or political opponents. Despite him receiving a harsh criticism and backlash for the illegal things that he was doing, he was actually still kept on the FBI up until his death um, on May 2nd, 1972. I feel like being that this is the type of video that this is, I feel like I should probably mention the fact that um, Atlantic said that producer Brian Grazer referred to Edgar as, um, I mean, referred to Edgar J. Edgar Hoover as diabolical. So like, what the hell? Like, he had to be pretty like mean for him to refer to him as diabolical. Like, yeah. So yeah. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and get into how he's related to the deaths of Malcolm X and um, Martin Luther King Jr. So. J. Edgar Hoover actually um, began to keep a close eye out on Malcolm X, who died um, February 21st um, of 1965, after he wrote um, a letter to President Truman from prison in 1950, basically just opposing the war. So basically, Malcolm X wrote that letter from prison opposing the Korean War, and after that, um, the the director of the FBI decided that he should keep a close eye on Malcolm X for something so innocent. Hoover was so like had such a close lookout on uh, Malcolm X and he actually started to get pretty irritated when his officers was coming back with nothing. They actually even referred to him once as a morally good guy like in one of the articles I read that that they actually referred to him as a morally good guy. He didn't drink, he didn't smoke and stuff like that because as most of you know he was a part of um um he was a part of the nation of Islam where smoking and drinking and fighting and violence and stuff like that is actually prohibited. Can't even have guns in that religion. So like you know they he was basically squeaky clean and Truman did not like that. So after he started to get really irritated, Truman actually sent instructions out on June 5th of 1964, less than a year before Malcolm X was murdered. He sent instructions to the um, FBI office in New York to do something about Malcolm. 
I don't know what he meant by do something about Malcolm. And I don't know why nobody thinks it's such a coincidence that less than a year before Malcolm was killed, those instructions were given out to an FBI officer. Like, it's so weird. And, okay, so yeah. And then another thing that, um, you know, makes people kind of suspicious on the fact that um, J. Edgar Hoover might be involved in Malcolm X's death is the fact that or at least maybe if J. Edgar Hoover, it, Hoover isn't involved in it, the government is hiding something. Like somebody else other than the people that they have arrested have something to do with the death of Malcolm X. Because they still will not release the freaking FBI files from Malcolm X's death. They won't release all of the information. They'll really like they release a little bit, but they won't release all of it. And actually, um, like I said earlier, um, Malcolm X was a part of the Nation of Islam, so when Mal- but, okay, I feel like I need to explain this. So, before Malcolm X actually, um, before Malcolm X passed away, he had a fallen out with, like, a higher up in the Nation of Islam called Elijah Muhammad, and, um, basically, he left the Nation of Islam and um, opened his own mosque and yeah like the, the Nation of Islam and Malcolm X cut ties completely and for some reason the for some reason the cops feel like the Nation of Islam basically plotted his death basically the leader of the Nation of Islam Elijah Muhammad and um, Minister Louis Farrakhan had um, something to do with their deaths they had one of the local um, mosque members kill him that's what the FBI basically is trying to imply that's what the government is putting out into the media and I know they're putting this out into the media because of something that I'm actually gonna talk about um, in the end of my video and you guys are gonna be super duper shocked when you see that so yeah they basically planted that into the media to basically make it seem like the nation of Islam was out to get Malcolm X boom so if that's the case and it was completely nothing to do with the government then why haven't all the files been released why can't you guys just release the files and we can just know the truth because um lewis faircon actually has um asked he's requested for those files to be um released so many times he's done it so many times he's because he's being framed me not framed but like they're trying to imply that he has something to do with it so he basically just wants to clear his name yeah and they refuse to do that so yeah like I just think that's a really sketchy situation and like I said earlier I don't know like I don't think that m maybe J Edgar Hoover didn't personally murder Malcolm X himself but I feel like he knows something about it and I feel like maybe he was the guy to have someone go out and do that and say that they were a part of the Nation of Islam or whatever, like the government is powerful. Anyways, okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and talk about how J. Edgar Hoover is connected to Mount Martin Luther King's death. Now, um, in one article I read, they said that the only reason that um, Martin Luther King Jr. and um, J. Edgar Hoover were connected was because of um because president kennedy uh wanted to keep a close eye out on martin luther king jr because he felt like he was basically dangerous and then in another article and though the, both of these articles are going to be linked down below i'm going to have all of these every source that i looked at and put in this article i mean in this video is going to be linked down below but yeah so um and then in another article I read, um, they said that, um, this is a word for word what the article said. The U.S. Federal um, Bureau of Investigation, FBI, began monitoring, mar monitoring Martin Luther King Jr. in December of 1955 during his involvement with the Montgomery bus boycott and engaged in covert operations against him through the 1960s. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover was 
personally hostile towards King, believing that the civil rights leader was influenced by communists. This animosity increased after April 1964 when King called the FBI completely infectual in resolving the continued mayhem and brutality inflicted upon the Negro in the Deep South. And actually, under the FBI's domestic counterintelligence program, COINTELPRO, King was subjected to various kinds of um, FBI surveillances that produced alleged evidence of extramarital affairs, um, though no evidence of um, <laughs> communist influence, which was actually what he was originally supposed to be being monitored for. So, yeah. Anyways, but yeah, actually what I was wanting to talk about in the outro was what I mentioned when I was reading that quote from the article, Quintel Pro. That's actually what I wanted to talk about was Quintel Pro. Um, and it's actually so interesting that I'm actually thinking about doing my next video on it. Well, my next um, Scary Saturday video. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about making that next video about Cointel Pro because it's so interesting. It is basically a bunch of illegal projects done by the U.S. FBI to spy on organizations considered submersive um, basic, or basically destructive. Tactics included discrediting targets through psychological warfare um, and planting false reports in the media, which is what I was talking about when I was referring to earlier yeah <laughs> I'm gonna put a clip right here because I kind of forgot myself that's what the FBI basically is trying to imply that's what the government is putting out into the media and I know they're putting this out into the media because of something that I'm actually gonna talk about um, in the end of my video that's actually what I was talking about um, when I said that um, and I'm um, actually gonna have a link to some more information about Quinto Pro in the bio that's probably gonna be one of the first links that you guys see um so yeah I'm gonna put that in the bottom bio just in case I forget to make the video because sometimes I just forget <laughs> but yeah I do want to say thank you so much for watching this video I wanna um so make sure you remember to like, comment, and subscribe and share to keep my channel growing. Thank you.